Hey, what is up, guys? Commander Andrew 2015 here. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go a little bit over the different kinds of missions you can send your naval task forces on. Uh, first mission you can send your task forces on naval exercise. This is really good <clears throat> to get your fleet trained up before you engage another enemy fleet or go to war. What this is basically doing is training up your fleet, it's causing your <clears throat> ships to gain uh, experience. I see here. Our U.S. Enterprise right here is experience level 2, and they are trained, so they will receive no bonuses. But if we continue letting it train up, it will get to regular, and we're going to get some nice bonuses right there. Uh, other training experience level is, is fresh, which gives you minus 10% damage and defense. So there's a big incentive to get your fleet trained up before you go to war, so you don't lose out on... Alright, the next um, mission task force there is, there is the, the patrol option. What this is going to do is, you're going to click on this button, and then you're going to assign the uh, naval zone that you want your fleet to operate in. Uh, a patrolling kind of task force is mainly just some destroyers and some cruisers, fast ships that have um, a decent surface detection to uh, locate other enemy fleets and task forces. You don't need these heavy cruisers, just throw them in there, extra. Uh, as we see here on this uh, 1936 cruiser, it has a base surface detection of 20 due to its current hull. Uh, the higher surface detection you have on your ships, the quicker you're going to be able to locate an enemy task force. So you can boost this number uh, by having radar. That's going to increase your surface detection by 12 for the level 3 radar here. Uh, you can also throw in a sonar. That's going to help with uh, sub-detection here. Sonar right there. And so this fleet is going to be searching for an enemy task force operating in the sea. And so that kind of brings me to the other mission, the strike force option. You put the strike force option on here, and so this fleet is going to wait in the harbor until our patrolling scouting force has been able to locate a task force. This is how the AI usually do it. You don't need to do it this way. There's other options to engage enemy task forces and such. But yeah, uh, patrol basically just going to search out for enemy fleets and then relay that information back to a strike force. Strike force uh, is uh, usually our big capital ships and carriers. This is what the AI usually does though. You don't need to do this like I said. Uh, big enemy task force, big carriers, battleships, all like, and they're waiting in harbor until they relay relayed that information by the patrol force and then they will come out of harbor and engage that task force. Uh, I can show that probably really quickly right here, tag to Japan, go their fleet, put them on, uh, let's put them on convoy raiding, and then we're going to go back to America, and so our patrolling force is locating them, and they have absolutely found this task force operating here, and so now, thanks to uh, our main task force having strike force, uh, strike force, <laughs> what, button? Strike Force mission selected on this task force, they are going out to engage this task force. As you see here, we got a naval battle. And, yeah. Alright, the next uh, mission type is Convoy Raiding. This is where you basically take out uh, your fleet, and it's just going to search for convoys and hunt them down and sink them. This is most commonly used on submarines, practically. You get your submarine uh, group, flotilla, fleet, whatever. Put them on convoy rating, say around Japan, around here, and it's going to search out for convoys of Japan and it's going to sink them. As we see here, real quick, they're searching. We're going to find one eventually. Oh, as you see, it's found a Japanese convoy and it's going to sink it. That's usually what convoy rating is used for. You can also use your main fleet if you really want to, uh, but be prepared to engage the enemy fleet, etc. like that, and it's uh, quite expensive once you, you use your whole main fleet convoy rating, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, convoy rating is pretty simple. It's just looking for convoys around the enemy's shores, sinking them. Alright, well the next uh, mission your task forces can go on to is a convoy escort. Uh, it's where your fleet's basically going to search out these Raiding packs, uh, surface raiders, submarines, that kind of thing, and escort your convoys to the location they're going. Uh, if we go to Japan real quick, 
We have the American subs raiding in these areas. Uh, if we were to take our main fleet here, put them on convoy escort, split them in two. How split them? Split them into four. They are going to escort the convoys around here if they're intercepted, basically. As you see here, we have some American subs that are trying to raid some convoys here. Our main fleet is showing up, and it's now going to escort, uh, where are the convoys? Right here. They're going to escort these eight convoys to safety. Oh, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Convoy raiding, convoy escort, that kind of thing. All right, the next mission you can send your task forces on is mine laying. It's, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Your ships that are assigned to this are going to go into the zone designated, and they're going to start laying mines. Uh, Ling Mines is going to affect the enemy's speed in the given zone and also cause a little bit of damage over time as their task forces are moving through the zone. Uh, you do need the Mine Ling module equipped on your ships right here. As you see on this US light cruiser, Mine Ling rails. You need these to be able to actually lay mines. And it's the same thing if you want to uh, sweep for mines practically. If you go to a, uh, a destroyer. As you see, store mine sweeping gear. It's a uh, back and forth. You mine, uh, the enemy can mine sweep it. But generally, the AI does not mine sweep that often, making uh, mine laying a interesting option if you really want to invest in it. Uh, we don't start off with many mine laying vessels, but you can definitely refit older vessels that are kind of past their prime, especially uh, obsolete submarines like sub. Ones, maybe even twos. You can refit those with the mining module and mine any given sea within range. Practically, uh, it's a pretty good choice if you're fighting AI to get a little bit of mining in their main ports. Possibly, definitely the coast of Japan here, where they have their capital and a lot of uh, ports, etc. It's going to cause a, a decent amount of pain. To be real, it's also going to add a little bit of naval supremacy if you're looking to get a naval invasion off. That kind of thing. So, I mean, mine link's definitely a decent option if you want to invest a little bit into it. Go right ahead. If you want to use your old ships to go right ahead. All right. So we've covered mine laying, mine sweeping. Practically the same thing. It's just the opposite. Sweeping for mines, etc. Uh, <clears throat> naval invasion support. This is the mission you give to your task force when you are trying to get a naval landing. Uh, we have this division here in Guam. Quickly just assign a simple naval invasion order to him send him to Iwo Jima and you'll see this arrow that is indicating like the path this division will take so then you will set up your main fleet naval invasion support and the tile that it needs to uh, guard this division practically it gets in line and so now this fleet will escort this division all the way to Iwo Jima Make sure you actually have it assigned. And yeah, there we go. You can see the division being sent and the fleet that's going to escort this division. And boom, that's pretty simple naval invasion order. That's how it works. Uh, you can also use this order to project naval supremacy in a current region. Uh, for an example, we want to inflict uh, naval supremacy on the Philippine Sea. And also the Mariana region with our main fleet, but we don't want to. We don't actually want our fleet to like go engage at this current state of time. But we want to have naval supremacy there so that the, the enemies can't land their own naval invasions. Uh, naval invasion support can actually help with that. You can put it on the two tiles or multiple tiles you want to inflict the uh, naval supremacy. In. And as you see, we have naval supremacy in these tiles. Quickly tag over to Japan. Send them out on, let's just say, patrol. And as you see, we do have uh, naval supremacy just by having these on naval invasion support. Not actually a strike force or anything or patrol. They're just sitting in harbor, naval invasion support, causing uh, these two tiles to be uh, completely dominated by our naval supremacy. Very useful tip. Alright, to uh, finish off this video, I'm going to quickly go over uh, access levels. 
given a certain uh, naval tile here. So what you want to do, click on a zone that is causing some trouble. Let's say we're being convoy raided in the East China Sea or and the Yellow Sea. Uh, we go onto these tiles and see here this access level. Access level is allowed, so our fleets and trade routes will move, will move through this uh, region as normal. Then there is caution, they'll try to avoid it. And then there's outright blocked, and our fleets and our convoys will never go there. So we put that on blocked, maybe put East China Sea on blocked as well. And so now our our uh, fleet and our convoys will never go into these two tiles. This is uh, quite useful if you are being convoy raided in a certain area. You can just block it off and uh, change the supply route or <laughs> the division route, whatever it may be. Uh, axe levels. Pay attention to them. If uh, one tile is causing you a lot of trouble, just just block it off, and you won't have to worry about it. Of course, you can cycle these, etc., and avoid. Uh, it's just it's pretty much caution. Like your fleet will try not to go onto this naval tile, but if it needs to be, if it needs to protect a convoy, a division, etc., it will. But yeah, that's a uh, access levels, and that's about the end of the video. Try to make it a, make it a quite sh a shorter video compared to the 45 minute guide I went on. This is just a little bit about strike missions and uh, a little bit about access levels given naval tiles and stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.